We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Our moment in the sun Welcome, everyone, to the Easy Street Podcast with Rob Scribner, your host. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hi, guys, and welcome to Easy Street. I'm Rob Scribner, your host. This is episode 11, and today is a show kind of uh, um, shooting from the hip here a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. A friend of mine just did a a, a video uh, Gene from uh, Hamilton radio and uh, he just lost his dog and uh, uh, I don't know I'd say he was talking about all kinds of things about the relationship with the dogs and stuff like that and I kind of was motivated to talk about um, pets a little bit good bad and ugly and uh, as you can see, I have a picture up of my current dog and cat right now. Now, I say the word current because when you're my age, which is under 60, but not by much, um, you've been through a couple of pets. <laughs> like, I think we, I've been through probably up to eight or nine dogs in my lifetime and uh, a few cats. So uh, you see, we have uh, we're constantly using our pets for commercials for the Range Rock poopy bags, but um, you can see we have one cat, a little gray cat. She was a uh, shelter cat. Uh, we got her as a kitten, and we got Cinder. She's a purebred, and she's an American Chocolate Lab. And uh, of course, as she's gotten older, she's now seven. Uh, not quite as dark brown as she is in the picture, and uh, you know has a little white on her chin now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> her nose uh, you know it's not perfect fur anymore uh, but a beautiful beautiful dog and uh, uh, you know so there's a lot of people have different relationships like a lot of people don't let their dog on the bed and stuff like that or on the furniture our dog gets all of it she sleeps with us she's uh, we even bought couches that were brown um, and uh, we buy furniture that we know can hold up to cats and dogs really well our cat's a beautiful cat. She's uh, well-trained, doesn't scratch on her furniture. She's uh, just, uh, and um, by the way, both of them travel really well. And then we, we traveled with them in an RV since they're kittens and puppies. And so they just travel well. They get in a car and they know exactly what to do. So it's amazing. So uh, uh, I've had all types kind of, I've had, Little dogs, big dogs, uh, mostly big dogs, from St. Bernard's to a couple of golden retrievers. I uh, had a chocolate lab before Cinder, and uh, what a wonderful dog that was. Her name was Ginger, and uh, uh, Cinder, um, uh, just, I don't know, chocolate labs are kind of unique. Um, ch so ch just if you don't know much about chocolate labs, at least the American ones, they're not huggy dogs. They like to be right by your side and they want you to pet them all the time, but they don't like to be coddled. They don't like to be hugged at all. They just kind of squirm out of it and uh, uh, not mean or growly or anything. They just aren't comfortable if uh, uh, even if they're laying in the bed with us and you put your arm around them and maybe scratching her, it, that bothers them too. It's like they have a, a like a shell or a uh, aura that they just don't like to have that. Uh, affection where a golden retriever are just just huggy dogs all the time is amazing <clears throat> but uh, you know I've lost a few dogs in my life and uh, the hardest ones I found were always the ones that grew up with the kids because um, a dog and uh, your kids have a really interesting relationship as the kid gets older uh, as little as when they're little they're always playing with the dog or always mad at the dog for getting into their toys as they grow up they kind of uh, go through their adolescence of uh, you know going from kid to teenager and adult 
and uh, the dog you know notices the kid's gone more and and uh, becomes more the parent's dog but uh, they go through all those changes and uh, the dogs by their side the whole time and uh, it's amazing and uh, I, I I think one of the things I I to understand religion or my religion which is Christian I often will just think about my dog which is there's you know taking my my belief my faith and knowing that I am loved by my faith my God Jesus unconditional um, just like a dog um, no matter how bad I've been or how uh, how I've acted or if I was angry at the dog or yelled at the dog um, the dog still loves me now I'm not saying do that I'm just saying sometimes I think pets are a good example of how uh, a real person needs to act occasionally or um, there's times when we have to be different but the love of a dog is amazing um, I think the most uh, uh, sad relationship with a dog I had was I had a St. Bernard when I was little at age 14 I lost my mother and our mother had pancreatic cancer it was a real long terrible thing but uh, uh, we had a medical bed in our house in the night that she passed away um, it was very late at night um, was really tough and so I went outside with my dog and I lived kind of out in the woods a little bit so out in the Thule so you know I just took off with my dog and, and needed to grieve and that dog um, just looks in your eyes and kind of coddles with you and knows that you just need to talk and uh, they just soak in all your emotions and give it back and through their eyes through simple softness and, and it was amazing how much comfort that dog gave me I even get kind of choked up when I think about it and uh, what an amazing relationship that people have with their pets and uh, you know and cats are the same in a different way you know of course our cat owns our house and uh, uh, yeah so um, <laughs> what can I say about cats cats are just they're there in a different way and uh, we do appreciate you know do appreciate that um, I just noticed that my studio is kind of off a little bit so uh, hey just let's go let's just go with this but uh, yeah I just I get so angry when I see people that can't take care of a dog I wish people could realize that if they're not in the position to take care of a dog or cat don't have one just give it up I would much rather see you give it up take your dog back to a shelter or or whatever than to see him tied in a rope in the backyard and a dog house and hot temperatures or cold temperatures not getting that personal relationship and one of the things Gene was saying on his little video is he felt bad the times he didn't give to the dog. But yeah, I mean, if you look at animals in, in let's say, 100, 200 years ago, uh, most animals were on their own. And they were under the laws of nature. And with uh, uh, living with people, um, giving them the food that they want and the warmth and a place to live and, and, and time with people and, and time with kids. Um, if your dog lives five years, 10 years, 15 years, you've given that dog a wonderful life as opposed to 200 years ago. So, uh, I would never, I mean, obviously, I mean, you should always try to give your pets as much time as possible. And, and one of the things I, I've heard this before and it, and it struck me quite a few times that you know it's so sad that a dog is this only has a life of maybe 10 15 years sometimes shorter and uh, you know if the dog if you're looking at the picture that's right there next to me and that dog just says hey 
I'm only here for 10 years. Let's make the best of it. Let's do it. Let's, let's have some fun. And if you've done that in that time frame, give that dog or cat uh, a life of being comfortable, warm, um, comfortable, you've done your job. God would be pleased. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's to feel guilty that you're gone or you had to work every day and stuff. You're still giving that animal a wonderful home to live in and uh, always had didn't have to fight for its food and it had a place to sleep. And uh, uh, when you got home, always gave it that love that it wanted, uh, whether it's jumping on you or it just needs to be pet, wants to sit next to you or be on your lap. Uh, our dog gets to sleep with us, this crazy mutt. She's not a mutt either, but <laughs> she's still crazy. Uh, bed hog, the whole works. Cat comes in to visit. Sometimes it looks like a zoo in our house. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're gonna lose your dog you're going to lose your cat and you're going to go through that a couple of times in your lifetime. And it's hard. It's real hard, but it also teaches you a lot um, how precious life is. One of the things I know that you can always look at a cat or a dog is because their lives are short, they're so good at living in the now. Even if there's a, if they're hurt or not feeling good, that second you're petting them, that second that you're playing with them, it's everything to them. They don't dwell on things. They know how to live. They know to live for now. This time you got with them right now is everything to them. And that's something you can apply to relationship with the people. And uh, I, I admire that a lot about pets and animals. Meet the most rockin' dog owner in the whole wide world. Dude, when I rock out, I only rock out with the Ranger Rob poopy bags. They're the best. Totally. Make it easy to pick up your dog waste. Go to Amazon right now and get free shipping. We're on easy street. Okay, guys, we're back after that painful commercial. <laughs> you gotta... Yes, we are sponsored by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. And, of course, they were motivated by my wonderful dog. And uh, why did I, why'd I create them? Well, it was because we needed a bigger bigger and better bag. And that's what we are, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. So you can find them on Amazon, by the way. So we're talking about our pets. And uh, some of the things that are kind of amazing about pets. First thing is I... I find it amazing how pets know what time it is. For example, our dog gets her, she doesn't eat much. She's a munch, you know, kind of nibbler during the day. So if I give her dry food, she'll nibble a little bit and, and, uh, but she doesn't eat at all. That just kind of nibbles and I always want to keep her a little bit of food around. Uh, but I make sure she never eats. I try to keep a cup of dry food a day for, her. um, but she loves wet food, a can of wet dog food. When I do that, ever since she was little, she'll eat all of it in one serving. So that's a very special time for her. She just, that's when she eats her whole dinner. And so it's kind of funny. I, I over time, when I, when I was working and stuff, about four o'clock is when I started that. So, I mean, she, we've done it since she was a puppy. When four o'clock comes along and I passed it, it's amazing how the dog knows what time it is every time. And, uh, you know, like 15 minutes before four, she starts hanging around me. If I'm doing a show like this, she'll come into my studio and sit next to me and sometimes even give me little nudges saying, oh, you know, it's like, dad, it's almost four o'clock. And I find that totally amazing. And then the other thing we do is they say with chocolate labs or Labradors is they're very smart and you want to keep them challenged. So we started a little thing with a Kong, those little red plastic Kongs that are hollow in the inside. Well, since she was a puppy, uh, I, I've gotten toys for her that are considered um, puzzles and stuff. And she, 
they're not puzzles to her. They just like zap, zap. I figured it out, dad. But a Kong is a challenge to her because I'll take it. I put peanut butter in it. And this is at eight o'clock every day in the evening. And then I take a little, what they call little square snaps. They're those little things. And, uh, uh, I, once I put the peanut butter in, I, I put a stack of those inside there. So she's got to get them out every night. And at first it used to take her hours, but now she's mastered it. And, uh, but, uh, if I miss that eight o'clock, I mean, I'll be sitting there watching TV and she, and she may not say a thing. And then I'll kind of look down from it and she's sitting right there staring at me like that blank stare, like, uh, Hey, it's almost eight o'clock. I find that totally amazing. And so, uh, um, if somebody said that a study said that they, it's, um, how they know what time it is, is kind of a sense of the day, uh, the certain smells, the certain conditions of the household of a, a pattern. Um, somehow they just kind of relate that to the time, um, through smell and, uh, I kind of might kind of buy into that in the conditions of the weather or, t or lighting or something that they just know what time it is. I find that truly amazing. Um, our cat can't do that. She's just exists like <laughs> totally, totally different relationship. Um, but I find that really interesting how, uh, cats, uh, how dogs can kind of know what time it is. Just like when Sherry was working on a regular basis and came home around five thirty, six o'clock in the evening, about that time, you could see her getting antsy and starting to look towards the door and sometimes go over the door and sit by it knowing that that's what time she came home from work. Uh, that's amazing. Um, it used to be a time I used to think, well, gosh, they know when they're coming way beforehand. Um, and they, uh, why, you know, while you're in transit and I, I don't quite believe that. I think they just kind of know the, the conditions and the time of it when it, that, and, and that's amazing. And of course they're right there with that unconditional love and they act like you haven't seen them in months. Can you do that with somebody? There's my question to you. Whenever you see somebody, do you feel as excited and an, a thrill to see them as say a dog does every day when you come home from work. Maybe you, should we, should we be more like I'm home dear. Oh my gosh. Give her a hug. Give your wife a, a hug. Give you a, a kiss. Like you haven't seen her in weeks. Could that get old? Doesn't want a dog. Does it feel good when you come home and know that? Hey, as soon as I come to that door, I know I got, I've got to pet my dog. She'll be all over me. I've got to talk like a crazy man to her or whatever. And, um, uh, what if we did that with our spouses? Is that too much and overkill? Would you, um, I don't think so. I think, I, I think we have things we could learn from a dog. I almost say like, if you could take some of the things that your dog does for you and apply it to your life, um, your life may be better. Um, I find it also amazing if a dog uh, is missing a leg or is injured or something like that, how if they can still function, there's no peer pressure. There's no, it's all about life right now. Even if I'm hopping along on three feet and, and poor, you know, I, I find humans, we get so conditioned and social pressured and Facebooks and things that all you can do is dwell on what you can't do where a pet just says, I can do this. I'm good. Let's go. I'm on it. I mean, some even have legs that don't work. They'll put wheels on them and dogs don't care. They're just perfectly happy. You're right there with a person having a good time. No pressure. So yeah, I know I, I, uh, I know I, I'd love to hear your comments about your relationship with your dog. How important is it to you? Or maybe you'll never have a pet. Like I've done that before. And then I've heard people say after going, losing a pet, it was so devastating and grieving. I was like, I'm not getting another one. I can't go through that again. 
I kind of think we should. I think going through that cycle is good. Uh, with children, you get kind of one shot at it. With pets, you get a few shots at it. You get to see them from puppyhood. When Cinder was a puppy, I had to get a little kennel. And we kennel trained her first. We lived in an apartment at first. And I had to get a little kennel. And I had to put it right next to my bed. And it became my responsibility to take that little puppy in the middle of the night, every night, and take her out to a piddle pad. We were in a uh, second floor apartment. So we had a piddle pad thing set up for, which she handled perfectly, which I didn't have to go outside every time. And uh, it was wonderful. When we lived in Washington, it got cold and wet. So anyway, but uh, like clockwork, she'd wake up in the middle of the night, a little wine there. I'm right by her side. And, uh, she, and if I wasn't right by her side, she'd whine a lot and stuff in an apartment. We couldn't have that. And eventually she grew up into a bigger kennel. And I used to, uh, luckily I didn't work that far away. And I would come home from work for about six months every day to uh, get her out of the kennel, let her go potty and play with her a little. And I only had like 20 minutes with her every day. And I did it like clockwork. And uh, and eventually she was gotten to a big enough girl that she... Uh, I said, I'm a big girl now, and uh, she could stay in her kennel the whole day. And then uh, uh, she graduated from that pretty fast. And uh, um, just like little things I remember uh, in a pickup, if we would go to somewhere like a casino or something, and she was with us, um, which we could do because the weather is cooler up in Washington State, I had to put a little fence thing between the back seat and the front because... If I was to leave like a milkshake or a pop or something in there, she'd climb over and get into it and stuff. So we eventually had to uh, put a little uh, fence thing in between, a divider, and uh, eventually, and then left little treats in the door, and she just lay down and stuff. And eventually, learned that the back seat's hers, and pretty soon I could I took that down. I didn't need it anymore, and it was amazing how fast she learned. And I look back at those days, how hard that was. So getting a puppy was tough, especially a Labrador. She was a rambunctious little bugger. Now she's, oh my gosh, um, most reliable dog I ever had. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I've had farms in the past. I used to actually have a game bird farm where I had three dogs, where it was two, two Goldens and one Chocolate. And uh, one lived up to 15 years old. The other golden didn't make it till nine. And then the gold, uh, chocolate lab lived till about 11. Um, and their relationship with us was so different. They were kind of working dogs. And so they'd help out with the, the game bird farm. And uh, it was amazing how protective the dogs would be over the baby birds or the flocks or the cages. Um, looking after not only us, but looking after the animals in our farm. And uh, it was amazing. And I love to hear little stories in the comments below of uh, the amazing things you've learned from your dog and your cats and, uh, and the relationship they have with your family. Uh, how important are they? Um, and if you've lost a pet, are you going to get another pet? Or uh, you're done. It's like, I can't go through that anymore. And uh, I don't know, I, I just think the cycle is important for us to go through through our lives because I think we forget how to live for the now and we forget uh, the achievements of like a dog would make as they get older, just like people do. And then the cycle of them slowing down and then eventually uh, needing just as much love and attention as an old dog as a puppy. And, uh, and it tests you as a, as a person. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think of my pets and I smile. And then there's obviously, if you have a home that uh, could uh, bring on a pet that's been uh, in a shelter and needs a home, uh, power to you. That's a good thing. After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, Teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. 
Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. And we are back and we're getting towards the end of our show. Uh, reminder, this is only a half hour show. You can find us on Good Talk Radio uh, and just go to goodtalkradio.com. Go to the schedule and you can see when Easy Street plays. Uh, we love your comments. We love you, uh, love you to be professional with your comments. And uh, if there's subjects you'd like us to talk about, we'll do it. If you'd like to be a guest on Easy Street, we can talk about anything on this show, and that's what I like about it. And I wanted a show like that. Um, yeah, and, and also you can, uh, if you look down in the description, you'll see other places where you can listen to Easy Street on a regular basis. Uh, you can go to uh, uh, iHeartRadio. You can also find us on uh, Spreaker and uh, some other, I don't know, I think we're in Google Play too, and a couple of things. But uh, yeah, we're... Uh, we're getting out there slowly but surely. Uh, we can bring guests on uh, as you, some of our prior shows. And uh, yeah, um, occasionally, we, sometimes we even play music, but yeah, we try to avoid that. But you know, guys, uh, the holidays are coming. Uh, I thought maybe I'd do a show of predictions. <laughs> Wouldn't it be interesting to do a show of predictions, what I think will happen in 2020. And then at the end of the year, see if any of them came true. <laughs> and a Ranger Rob cut away. I thought that'd be kind of interesting. Could be kind of funny. Um, yeah. And then, uh, of course, uh, with the year coming, uh, we're going to try to get our show out on a regular basis. Um, you know, and uh, I love to get one e out every week. I'd love to get on a schedule. That's something I need to work on. <laughs> it's my problem, not yours. But I want to thank you so much for listening to Easy Street. And thank you for your comments and support. And uh, please uh, um, talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Until then, have a great new year. Be safe out there. Make great goals. You, you know, always work on maybe your health, better eating, losing a little weight. Of course, we all kind of have that stuff. Um, and maybe take the time to learn from our pets to love unconditionally and maybe get in touch with God a little more. Anyway, guys, have a great day until next time. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.